Guys, what do you think of JBL, John Bradshaw Layfield? Sucks. He sucks. He's hard. Thanks, guys. This is the Rugby Odds, where an unlikely pundit panel of a wordsmith, a WWE legend, a rugby star, and a supermodel scour the globe, seeking best bets and bad behavior. Are you not entertained? Thank you, thank you. I know. And oh, thank, thank you, thank you. Much appreciated. But if you look at the sponsor opportunity green room, you'll see John Bradshaw Layfield, the WWE Hall of Famer turned rugby advocate, and his producer Holly and King Gifte Belu, the inventor of words, all prepping diligently for today's show. And what a show we have! Look at the your company name here, Slate, and you'll see exactly what's in store, including. George Hook calling in once again from Dublin. So let's not waste any time. Gentlemen, 37 and 23, a great record. And, you know, I just want to get to it and get it out of the way. John, you were at the top of the table, 13 and 6, I beg your pardon. Gift, you and I were at 12 and 7. And because of the tiebreaker, you win. Yours truly gets the wooden spoon. Anyway, you're like the worst thing generals. You're used to losing. Where'd that ball go? Hey, Meadowlark, where'd that ball go? Oh, man, I just lost again. Hey, Curly, you really going to shoot from half court? Man, he hit it again. Anywho, uh, we've also got a new a twist on the walk of shame. We're each going to nominate a person, player, organization, or a referee as the recipient of the walk of shame. And then we're going to vote on it and see who's won. So why don't we start off with you, John? Who's your walk of shame candidate this week? Super Brew. Oh my Let me explain this to you. This is a great website, by the way. I love it. I pick, have picks on there. I'm under JBL, John Layfield. But here's the deal. My good friend, Tommy Blanche, he's a great Hollywood writer. He used to write for Conan O'Brien, wrote for WWE. He entered this pool with all of his Hollywood buddies. He used Gerald Briscoe's, my dear friend, the Oklahoma legend, WWE Hall of Famer, ever Hall of Famer, Chickasha native Hall of Famer, ever Hall of Famer there is. He used Gerald Briscoe's picture. He won the pool. So I tried to use Gerald Briscoe's picture on my Super Brew. I got rejected for using Gerald Briscoe's picture because it wasn't my picture. So Super Brew for upholding the law and you not taking on someone else's identity is guilty here, John? No, no, no. I had my name down. I was using Gerald Briscoe's picture, who is my good friend. You're still impersonating somebody else. It is somebody <laughs> else, yeah, but it's my name. You're I just disguising put your Briscoe's identity. So what? You got some bean counter there behind Super Brew's little curtain or whatever you have. I think said, we might oh, have to go back to giving you the f walk of shame. Gift, who's your <laughs> nomination? That was fantastic, in my opinion. Almost as fantastic as the absolute insult that Rossing92 is for absolutely gut-blowing a freaking 22-8 lead in the second half. I, it probably was the bean counter who rejected John's picture that yep. was probably coaching up Rossing in Guaranteed. the second half. That little bean counter at Super Brew was the one that had the second half plan for Rossing. Exactly. That's why they got boat raced. Super boat Brew, raced. I, I want you to just ignore these idiots. Uh, we continue to appreciate no, your I'm hard mad work. I'm Super Brew. I, I, I don't know how to explain it. Anyway. Why is a bean counter from Super Brew planning the second half for Rossing? You see, that's the conspiracy theory here. And that's the walk of shame. Right. Well, I'm going to nominate a walk of shame candidate. Uh, in the form of Japan Rugby League One's Mitsubishi Dinobores, who conceded 12 tries and 81 points to the Wild Knights. That was like the most anticlimactic thing you could ever put. You, from now on, you've got to go like in the pre-show. All right. Not even like before us. you got to go in the pre-show. All right. And when I'm getting this word in. Management has decided that Gip's <laughs> choice wins this week. <laughs> Rassing 92. Oh, man, like that one. Identification. All right. I am. All right, let's talk about the Champions Cup matches. There was some great play across the board. Is there anything sticks out in your mind while we're taping the show about the previous weekend? John. Absolutely. Munster. Munster was a seven and a half point dog. I said last week I thought they would win. I thought they had a chance of winning. I didn't think it was a very good chance. 40% plus of their roster is injured right now, and they go into Talon after losing to Connacht after tying Bayonne at home, they and they play a heck of a rugby game and win that game. Munster is, they are the real deal. 
gift. If you watch those Bulls against Bristol, that was beautiful. Beautiful behind the back, open space, and everybody looked ha- like they were having fun. They danced in the try line. It, it, like that's what you want. The Stormers, that score, the 31 24 score against Sal- Sales, not accurate. Closest. It was an absolute one sided game by the Stormers. Sale came back a little bit. I get it. But man, South Africa, whenever they are in their mode, man, they are a they're literally something to watch. It's like watching in, in the NBA about four or five years ago when the Splash Brothers were hot. Yes, exactly. Like, all you do, just zoom, hit that three, boom, hit that three, all of them. Just I, big plays. I agree with you. I, I think South Africa, to me, is a different level of rugby. You, I, you watch these rugby games, and you can see just athleticism. It's just unbelievable. And it looks like they're having a great time. The Bulls won that without a bunch of their spring box. And Devon Williams at fullback came on, was the man of the match. And I'm just wondering if Willie LaRue is going to get Wally pipped by Devon Williams after that match, despite the fact that he's a springbok. This kid was all over the pitch. And, and Bristol's a good side. There are they are a good side. They are yes. a good side. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. But also, how about the Glasgow Warriors thinking they had stolen at death the match? And then the referee confers with the boot, the guy that looks like the French Mr. Bean. And they reverse the call, rightfully so. No try. What a thriller, but what devastation for Glasgow. 84 minutes. How about Saracens? Saracens takes their 100% A side. He got molly walked. All the contract stuff from Maro Itoji way, way early last year to now this Owen Farrell stuff. That Saracens team is more and more falling apart by the wayside. I think they're about to be in a position where they're going to be in a two, three year rebuild after this year is completed. King, you said that last week, and that was pretty prescient comment because the Saracens, that is not the Saracens that we expected because they, they, they knew they had to win. Uh, they brought everything they had and it was not even close to good enough. That's shocking for Saracens, because they're still the same team that won the premiership. Exact same team. <laughs> Way to go, Holly, typing in pressure into John's teleprompter. That is just now, amazing. Holly's giving you her middle wow. finger out of the ball Un- right now. Unbelievable. Holly hates you. Holly wants to buy you. All right, guys, let's take a quick break and then welcome in George Hook. We're getting paid. Need a great price on a new vehicle? Sheehy makes it easy. Easy Price shows you our lowest prices on the Mid-Atlantic's largest selection. Find your best price online or at any of our 31 dealerships. It's easy at Sheehy. Sheehy.com. If you're in New York City and want to watch some great rugby, have some great food, and some great times, go to the world's best rugby pub, The Pig & Whistle on West 36th Street. And we're back, and we're welcoming in George Hook. George from Dublin, how are you? Very, very sick. Week <laughs> six of six. Uh, coughing, sniveling, sneezing, cold. Uh, otherwise, I'm in fantastic form. All right, so anyway, George, the, the big question that everybody wants to know, did you watch Doris Day or did you watch La Rochelle? Well, I watched everything, but, but the key thing here is what it tells us about this championship. When you have three in top five teams in top 14 to lose, you have the two Parisian teams who are first and third in the top 14 lose. Uh, one of them arrives in Dublin to play Leinster with a third 15. I mean, they threw the game before they started. And this has been going on for years. The French make a decision at a certain point in the tournament, are we playing in the top 14? Are we playing Europe? They don't try and play them both. So that's what we're looking at now. The two Parisian teams are really so sad. We're only half interested. But then to see Leicester, and more importantly, Saracens, destroyed yeah. by Bordeaux and La Rochelle. Bordeaux put nine tries yeah. past Leicester. Now, if you haven't looked at the YouTube highlights of this, they do all nine tries, one after another. And it's awful. I mean, it's awful. So you're looking at the best English teams are awful in this tournament. Half the French teams are, are likely to be in the shake-up, and half of them aren't interested. 
Racing are looking for Owen Farrell, you'd really question, looking at the way he played. The Scots and Welsh, forget him. <laughs> and don't write Ireland off. First of all, there's Leinster, a fantastic record. Unbelievable roster. And you have Munster. Like, Munster went down. You cannot understand how big that win was against Toulon. It's very hard to understand. If you haven't had spent a lifetime like I have, my first ever game in, in France has, oh God, has got to be 50 years ago in Biarritz. And, and you... You you think we went down there and they were unbeatable. And and Munster went down to long and beat them and beat yeah. them comfortably, right? Yeah. Now next week, and, and I know John's gonna ask me, I guess he's gonna say, How are they gonna do against Northampton, given Northampton are top of the table? But if you haven't been in Toman Park, where the crowd are about nine and a half inches from the touchline and they're baying for your blood, like, it's a very difficult place to visit. It's difficult for court people to visit Limerick, let alone English people. So I, I tell you, if you want to pick a game next week, you know what to It's got to be Munster and Northampton. M Munster has, Bayonne comes in and ties Munster at home for Munster. Then Munster uh, goes to Connacht in the pouring rain, couldn't get a line out, loses the game, a really good, tough game. Then they go to France against Toulon, and I saw a stat that up to 40% of their roster was injured. and They're, they're seven-and-a-half-point underdogs. They win the game decisively. Which <laughs> what, what in the world's going on in the water in Munster, and which team shows up against Northampton? Because Munster, when their back was against the wall, it wasn't against Connacht. It wasn't against Bayonne. You know, they, if there's a different uh, reward after that game, they probably win those games. It was in Toulon. Which Munster shows up against Northampton? Well, you actually answered the question yourself. Back against the wall. So, like, Munster, no, we're in Toulon. And if we don't come out of here with a result, it's all over. And remember, this championship is, of, of all the nations involved, it means more to Irish teams than any other team in the championship, in my view. And they want to be in it. Their tradition is incredible. I remember I remember being at the final when they beat Biarritz. Uh, like, it's just incredible. And, and I... I I think they're going to come out of it. I think they're going to beat Northampton. I think Leinster will win, and I think we'll have two teams in the shape. Follow-up question. Uh, you, you, had, you mentioned the great teams of England, and obviously correct, Leicester and Saracens. But are those still the two great teams? The reason I ask is Northampton is just rolling people, and Sale went down to Africa and don't have George Ford, and they, they still play within seven points. They played a great game. Are those two really the great teams now? And Beth, Beth's three and oh, and they beat Rassing in dramatic fashion. See, Khaleesi was played played the whole game, gift, and he was absolutely stunned in that loss. It was oh. good though. John's, was great. Point, John's point is very well made. All right. The thing is that it's hard to differentiate between professional rugby in England and amateur rugby in England. So in in the amateur days of rugby in England, one of the great club teams of England, now in about, I think, Division Three or something, was Coventry. Coventry didn't lose a game between the end of World War II and 1965. They didn't lose a game. That was the amateur era. Like when we went to Coventry, we all we wanted to do was come out alive. That's all we wanted to do. We weren't interested in the result. So those teams have gone, but the history of Northampton and Leicester and clubs like this survives. Now, don't forget that Saracens have won this competition, what, twice? Yeah. Have been champions of England, what, three times in the last yeah. number of years? So, like, you, you just can't say Saracens aren't very good. But, like, when the French want to play, they want to play is perfect for people, old people with erectile dysfunction. It's the only pleasure they have left in their lives. Gift. All that one up.
I love this. This actually informs my exact question that I wanted to, and I'm glad that we're on this, and I'm glad, Matt, you didn't interrupt this. But what are those cultural aspects that these teams have, whether it's Ireland, Scotland, England, France? Why is it that we know that France is only going to play when they want to? And if they do play at their best, it's usually at home. The French, you, as, as long as they've had a top 14 championship, their teams have been better at home than they've been away. I remember Trevor Brennan, who played for Ireland and then played in France, and he said to me, I don't understand that. We get on the bloody bus and we, we travel to a game and we're already talking about losing. So the French have a huge problem at home and away. It's, it's your point, cultural. The Scots... Like are just not in it. They've never been in it, you know. Like since they were beaten by fifty points by the Springboks in in nineteen fifty one, they haven't been any good. So like Scotland is not a hotbed of rugby. So you by and large you can discount them. England is different, and what has happened with the England is cultural. Your very point. The great teams in the Midlands, when you went to the Midlands, Leicester played the All Blacks for crying out loud. Leicester, a club, an amateur club, played the All Blacks. When I coached London Irish, we went there on New Year's Day in a, for an amateur game, and it was 30,000 people in the ground. Yeah. So the tradition of that largely has been dissipated because they're professional clubs. All right, we gotta take we we gotta take a quick break. We'll be right, All right back. Well, I'll give you a quick answer. Ireland are the best pros, and England are the worst. <laughs> we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. cleats you need them tomorrow if you order today by 3 p.m new york time or noon la time they can have them to you tomorrow young old male female if you're playing on turf if you're playing on grass if you're playing in the rain you're playing in the heat they've got you covered rugbynow.com go there now and we are back george you mentioned saracens uh, Stuart Lancaster, who was the head coach of England in 2015, he's now at Racing. He wants to bring in Owen Farrell. Is it to save his ass because of his team in a must win with a big lead, blowing it at Bath? Well, first of all, I don't think players of the quality of Owen Farrell come on the market very often. So you've got a really good fly half on the market with certain issues. But nevertheless, if I was the coach of a major team and Farrell was on the market, I'd be thinking of picking him too. But what should Saracen's ownership do now? Should they should they unload everybody that's over the age of 28? And should they keep Mark McCall? Or is McCall going to, what's his next move? I'm not on the board of Saracen's, although I, coincidentally, it's the only rugby team in the world that I know half the board. Um, they they they're not stupid. They're key. They they they're not just investors. They're keen rugby guys, and and they invested not for the money, but because of a real interest in rugby. So they look at Saracens and try and fix it, but they might be looking at three or four years to fix it. Is it too early to say that La Rochelle and Toulouse have found their form in the Champions Cup and could conceivably? be in the final against each other or at least one of them? And who's going to knock them off? I mean, Bordeaux were magnificent. The quality of, of, of their play was just out of this world. Like, they've got a wonderful fly half. They've got two great wings. If, if you think about how great rugby teams attack, they need a fly half and they need two wings. And Bordeaux have that. So if I was going to pick a French team, I'd pick Bordeaux. You can't discount Leinster. You just simply cannot discount Leinster. Well coached, good depth, although they've now got two number 10s on the injury list. And the further the competition goes on and the longer Munster survive, the more difficult they're going to be. Wait, let me follow up on this. I want to ask, 
what happens if a South African team wins European Cup? Because when South Africa, like Stormers, once they get flying, it almost feels like nobody is matches with them. The Bulls this week saw them playing. It just feels like they hit a rhythm and they can. What happens if South Africa ends up winning this Investec Cup? Well, Groucho Marx said that he knew Doris Day before she was a virgin. Um, I remember when European rugby had European teams in it. So I cannot get my head around the idea that there are South African teams in a European championship. It's just a crass attempt at commercialization. And I don't think they're quite as good as you think. Okay. All right. And George, before we let you go, I just got to go back. I know that you're not feeling well. I know that you're on, you're on medication. Are you sure that you're taking Bordeaux as the French team over Toulouse or La Rochelle? Yes. Not taking anything away from them. But when down to 13 men, La Rochelle just still dismantled Leicester. That's a solid Leicester Tigers side. I, I, it was just amazing watching them do what they did with 13 guys. No, and their tight five is enormous. I, I, all those things have been in a part and parcel of the La Rochelle DNA for the last five seasons. Yeah. So they're going to be a team to beat, but like only one team can win it. And I'm paid big bucks by this program to make a call on who I think is going to win it. All right. You know, and and I think if it's a, if it's a French team... It's Bordeaux. Um, and, and don't get carried away by the performance against Leicester. Leicester and, and Saracens, almost the entire premiership in England is made up of pretty hollow clubs when the chips are down. They lack pride. They lack identity. They lack cohesion. They lack good direction. I don't even have anything to offer. Okay. We'll see, we'll see after this Saints versus Munster match. I'm prepared to give my next week's salary to the home for impoverished ladies if, uh, you know, these English teams start winning. <laughs> the, the folks at Bath and the folks at the Saints are just shaking their head and wagging their finger at you again, George Hook. And on that I note, remember, I want to thank you. I remember I was in the bus with my father, God rest him, and I was very young. And I saw the sign outside the building and I said, why are those women indignant? I said to my father and he said, no, they're not indignant. They're indigent. So <laughs> I've always understood the meaning of the word indigent since I was about seven years of age. <laughs> on that note, I want to thank George Hook for coming on. Thank you, George. God bless. <laughs> thank you, George. Thank you, George. From New York City comes America's longest running and most popular rugby show. The biggest names in Major League Rugby, MLR highlights, and big match previews. Rugby Wrap Up presents MLR Weekly, made in New York City. And we're back. Great having George again, huh, fellas? It's always a pleasure, especially when he talks culture. And people don't try and uh, Bam. act as if that was never a question. Bam. You know, I don't like your snarky, snide <laughs> accusations <laughs> gift. Okay? Sorry that King and Bailey asked an intelligent question and they didn't ask your stupid little scripted question that nobody wanted to answer. It's easy for you to say. Oh. Let's go on to the Champions Cup, the spreads. Who do you like, John? Munster and Northampton. Munster has to win this game. Northampton does not. I'm not sure who the better team is here. Munster's playing at home. I know George Hook uh, is under full belief, and justifiably so, that Munster is going to win this game. I think they probably are. Munster to beat Northampton in a great rugby game in Thorman Park. So you're saying the Saints don't have a prayer. Gift! <laughs> Look, I think the game that's really to watch is Toulouse versus Bath. That's a battle for the top seed. Toulouse came off strong last week. Bath lost. It's Bath. Bath? It's Bath. not Bath. It's Bath. Bath. You, you're you from New Jersey. It's Bath. <laughs> you're from New Jersey. The king happens to be cultured. Thank you, sir. It's Bath. Thank you. <laughs> 
So it's both dumb. won against Rossing 92, and they have a chance to be able to take it again to another French team, especially one that might not feel like they have anything to play for and put them in a position to have the best seating in the knockout stages and staying at home. So look in this one for Bath to actually take the points and the win and wash to lose on the road. <laughs> so you had Stallone, Van Dam, and Schwarzenegger all standing around and said, hey, let's be Premier League teams, Premiership teams. They said, okay. And Stallone says, I'll be Saracens. Van Damme says, I'll be Leicester. Schwarzenegger says, I'll be Bath. The Austrian <laughs> Oak says it's Bath. Kingy Bailu says it's Bath. You, you English flunky from Bayonne, New Jersey, don't get your way. You can't use the same exact joke you used last week and change one word. You just can't do that. Last week it was composers. Last week it was Strauss, Mozart, and I'll be Bach. That's funny. That's some funny, consistent, serial humor. I'm going to commit sacrilege here, and I'm going to say that the Saints, who we have underestimated repeatedly, all of us on this show, including you, John, when you picked Bayonne, how'd that work out for you? I against picked the Bayonne to cover, yeah. not to win. I picked the Saints to, to win. The Saints ran no him out of the idea. building. They were 42 to zero at halftime. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, about the worst bet I ever made in my life. Okay. So what I'm saying but here. I didn't we, pick them to lose. I picked them to win, just not by that much. I'm going with Northamp Northampton with the points, but I think Munster is going to win. Pick of the week. Gift. I'm looking at Stormers versus Stade Francais. Stade Francais absolutely got boat raced last week. I think the Stormers are absolutely going to murder the Stade Francais and get that number one spot because I look at Leicester and Leinster, and I think Leinster will actually lose to Leicester and allows the Dormers to be able to move to number one. You're saying Stormers on the road in Paris are going to win, and you're saying Leicester is going to beat Leinster. Yes. Uh, you want to bet me on the, the Leinster-Leicester match? Let's go. Okay. We got a spread of eight and a half. I'm giving you eight and a half. I expect Leicester to at least cover. We can do that, but I am looking at them to get the win over Leinster in All right. this one. I got Leinster with eight and a half. We'll see what happens here, pal. John, pick of the week. I'm going to go back to the well. I'm going to bring a little more water up because I figured out when you bet on Connick, I bet against him. So I'm taking Bristol here. as my play of the week because you pick Connick again. And like last week, you owe me. My pick of the week, I'm going with the Wild Knights, Japan's Rugby League One, to really take it to the Honda Heat. All righty, on that note, I want to thank WWE Hall of Famer turned rugby advocate and his producer, Holly John Bradshaw Layfield and King Gift A. Bailu, the inventor of words, and of course, the great George Hook calling in from Ireland. And thank you for tuning in. Please check out our other programs, including MLR Weekly, College Rugby Wrap-Up, and hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Please join our weekly newsletter and sign up for our American Red Cross blood donor team. So you don't like Native Americans. That's why you don't like Mr. Briscoe. <laughs> You're as bad as Huster. I'm glad he had a last stand. You're as bad as Andrew Jackson. Oh.